Welcome to the 20th season of the Nitwits, a weekly roundtable discussion on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Our panel includes Neil Rudell of the Altoona Mirror and Mark Brennan of FightOnState.com. Between them, they've covered Penn State football for 70 years. The Nitwits are hosted by WTAJ Sports Director Alex Colley, and each week we welcome a former Nittany Lion as our special guest analyst. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, an independent firm, and a firm foundation for your financial future. By Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Courtesy Motor Sales of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By Health South, your rehab choice. Health South Altoona, ask for us by name. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, uniform, and mat rentals. By Reed and Selaney Orthodontics. Doctors Reed and Selaney provide orthodontics for children and adults. By W.S. Lee & Sons, your local food distributor. Go Penn State! By Allegheny Street Cigar. Allegheny Street Cigar, Blair County's only cigar lounge. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. By Lakeview Sheds and Vinyl in East Freedom. You can buy off our lot or we can customize your dream shed. By Shields Awards and the Sports Shop. We have a fantastic selection of awards, apparel, and memorabilia at great prices. By EasyToUse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By FightOnState.com, as close as you can get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Sunday. Welcome to the Netwits as we are ready to break down Penn State's 56 to nothing domination over Georgia State. The usual suspects are here, El Tunamir's Neil Riddell, Mark Brennan of FightOnState.com. We've already had a national champion from the 82 team, and this week a member of the 86 national championship team, former PSU kicker Massimo Menka. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Ma Massimo, you were on the 82 team as well, weren't you? But I was, yeah. yeah. I was uh, fortunate enough to be there at the right place at the right time. You know? <laughs> uh, I was a freshman in 82 and then redshirted in 83, so I was able to play on both teams. We'll get to that, but that's yeah. pretty unique. I don't yeah. know how many other guys were a national championship, na national champions in 82 and Who actually 86. played. Yeah. Right. Somebody pointed out to me, and then when I look back, I was the only one yeah. actually, wow. that actually played because the other guys were. So we have royalty here. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to catch up with Massimo later in the show, but we're going to get right into last night's big win. How did that fare as far as what you expected and, you know, what are you able to pull away from this one? Well, we all picked very lopsided scores, so I think uh, there, nothing was, was a real surprise. I, I thought uh, the upside, uh, Trace McSorley was, was a lot sharper, five touchdowns, tremendous game, and what he does with his feet. I mean, obviously, Barkley, it, it, talk about Massimo being in the presence of greatness, <laughs> and Barkley <laughs> is just amazing. I mean, he, the, Georgia State had him seemingly hemmed in a couple times. That 85-yard run was, was a thing of beauty. But uh, I thought McSorley making plays with his feet, keeping plays alive, uh, just was a lot better this week. Yeah, usually the people in Vegas are so spot on. And to see that line at 37 and a half, I think anybody who has followed Penn State, was kind of, it, it, we all did here, was like, wow, that was like a sucker. I mean, that was like too easy almost. You know, the thing that I like, number one, Trace McSorley didn't play particularly well against Pitt. He was the first one to say that. It wasn't as if he was bad. He just wasn't as sharp. To get that back before you're going into the Big Ten, to me, is just, you know, he's going to go in with a completely different dynamic. And then, you know, the other part is everybody talked about Penn State's going to blow this team out because it's bigger, because it's faster. At the end of the day, really, to me, McSorley was the difference. You know, it's not because he's big. It's not because he's fast. He's just savvy. He's right. just a great decision maker. He's beating people with his intelligence. Sure, it helps to have weapons like Deshaun Hamilton and Saquon Barkley. But to me, that was huge. You know, the, uh, the defense pitched another shutout. Um, you know, I just, you know, as you talk about going into the Big Ten now at 3-0, and uh, and they've only had 14 points allowed, but they've really been uh, on the field a lot. And I don't, I'm curious how that's going to transcend once they get in against bigger, stronger teams. That's a great question. I mean, uh, Georgia State is not Iowa, so next week's the first big test. You know, that's, that's, I'm looking forward to seeing that, that game. 
Yeah, well, I, you know, the one good thing, Neil, obviously, is they're playing a lot of people on defense. So you, you wonder, I mean, I think they're going to continue to play a lot of people, but I don't think they'll go quite as deep. Well, obviously, they won't go quite as deep as the fourth team as th that they did in the fourth quarter. But I think you're going to see when they get into these tighter games, they will have those first teamers out more. They'll still, be, they'll, they'll still get the, the backups in there uh, to keep guys fresh, but not, maybe not quite as much. But yeah, I mean, and, and, you know, we'll get into it when we nitpick a little bit later. I think both lines, there are a little bit of, there's some questions there. Massimo, uh, being part of the special teams unit, uh, what's your impression this year? Because that has been a team strength so far. Yeah, no question about it in all phases of the game. And as you guys know, Coach Paterno stressed that all the time. You know, that was, you got offense, defense, and special teams. And it's nice to see that they have a great punt returner great hands, um, all facets of the game. Kickoff coverage that really um, got a great punter, great kicker. So it's, it, it's, it's, it's big. It's big to have all them running on all, on all cylinders. It's, yeah, it's that's where we watch. talked when, you know, when the sanctions hit, that, that was one of the areas where it really hurt because they right. still have very talented players you know, as starters at different positions, but you didn't have that depth where you could run out to punt coverage teams. You know, if you have a bad or if you have a penalty on a punt, you could get another group of athletes out there. So the athletic ability across the board on special teams has just been you know amazing what you're seeing. And you know, I'm actually I don't know about you guys, I'm kind of warming up to this Barkley as as a return guy, and and here's why because clearly teams are trying to take him out uh, of of being a, a weapon as a running back. But you know, now maybe you give him another extra two or three chances you know, if, you're, if your defense is playing well per game to, to touch the ball. And I think so long as his overall touches aren't getting crazy, I think that's maybe not a bad thing. And they're certainly not. I think he's only carried 42 times in three games. There's no Heisman candidates uh, historically that have been limited like that. So they're finding good ways to get him in the ball and in an open space. And he is uh, really a joy to watch, even on that opening kickoff. I mean, stumbling and... Uh, Kickers. The kicker tackled him. Did you see that? <laughs> wow. That, see, I didn't even realize that. The one person who would... And that's that's, that's going to be so that guy's like career highlight, I'll bet, right? Well, Mike wouldn't have picked that up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're going to take our first time out here on the Nitwits, but when we come back, we're going to nitpick last night's win when we return. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, an independent firm, and a firm foundation for your financial future. By Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Courtesy Motor Sales of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By Health South, your rehab choice. Health South Altoona, ask for us by name. We now return to the Nitwits. <laughs> a roundtable discussion of Penn State football. Welcome back. It's a big step from Georgia State to Iowa. So what areas are you emphasizing improvement on or even questioning after last night? Yeah, I would say I mentioned it a little bit before. I think neither line has been quite as dominating, and that's almost stupid to say when they've had two shutouts on defense and the offense is putting out the kind of yardage it has. But they have not really been able to impose their will on a couple of teams running the ball, in, in, in my opinion, with a back like Saquon Barkley. They've been able to effectively... Uh, get him the ball, you know, the passing game and that sort of thing, and he's gotten his yards. And defensively, they haven't been able to really clamp down on the running game of opposing teams. Uh, you know, uh, Georgia State got that running quarterback in late, and I know he was playing against a bunch of reserves, but they didn't really drop the hammer there. Yeah, Georgia State converted 11 third downs, kept the ball for 40 minutes. So you, I'm sure these Big Ten teams are taking notes. It's two weeks in a row they've only run 53 plays. I think Penn State's become so dependent on the big play that you are going to have to control the ball at some point in time. And I, th I think I thought their offensive line, I think I thought <laughs> their offensive line would be able to impose their will uh, by this point in the season uh, a little bit better than they have. Yeah, the other thing, it, Massimo, maybe you could address this. The you know, on special teams, Tyler Davis has been so effective for them the last couple of years, and now he's missed two of four. Does it, 
it, does it make a difference when you're in these games that are pretty much blowouts? You, you know what I'm saying? Because he's been such a money kicker right. in money situations. Is that is there a different level of focus? I know c- players could never admit that. Right. No, and, and he won't either. I mean, I, and I, I don't think it's anything like that. You know, the kid has missed what two or three kicks in three right. years, yeah. and he's very reliable. I, I think. I don't want to sound like I'm a kicker that makes excuses, but he's also working with a new snapper and a new holder yeah. this year. Keep, you know, so it takes time to get that, that uh, timing down. And, I, and he's working on it. I watched him um, in the third quarter, right, before, right after halftime. He was practicing before the uh, third quarter started. And you know, just trying to get the timing down. It's not that simple. I mean, I know they've been practicing together now a lot, but you know, he had it down to science the last couple of years with the... Uh, uh, the holder the group and snapper that he had. That he had and what about okay. double, doubling up as the kickoff guy, too? Does that yeah. make a difference for a kicker? Uh, I, you know, I'm sure he's going to tell you that he, he wants to be out there doing kickoffs. Right. I loved, you know, when I kicked here, I, I loved being able to do, to, to do both. I always took pride in, in kickoffs, you know, and trying to get it deep. And he's doing a heck of a job with kickoffs. I think. He's not getting that many opportunities either. Right. Uh, True. So that might be True. another factor. Yeah. You know, speaking of field goals, uh, <laughs> I, I just didn't like this. I, I don't know. I know. Hey, James Franklin's done a tremendous job since he's been here, but. obviously. No, but I just didn't <laughs> like calling timeout with 11 seconds to go. With Georgia State's trying to kick a field goal. They took a million, 1.2 million to come here. But, I mean, they're not the Washington Generals. It's, they're trying to score two. They weren't calling timeouts with a minute to go, and they had three as they came up to the field inside the red zone. I just thought, let them kick a field goal. Big deal. Do you really have to ice them? I just didn't like it. For the record, James Franklin said it wasn't about icing them. It was that they had their fourth team D line in there, and these guys had never practiced in field goal situations. Do you want somebody out there who's never done it? They ended up bringing bringing out second teamers. So whether you take him at his word or not, yeah, the other part of it, though, Neil, is we're in a different era. You know, this isn't back when, you know, everybody do the right thing, you know, that sort of thing. You have to score more, a lot more points. I mean, at the end of the at the end of the season, if they were to be left out of the college football playoff, it won't playoff, be because it was fifty six nothing versus. You don't think that three. people will look and say, "Look, at they had two shutouts." Did you write that at all? That they had two shutouts in their first I, three I wrote games? that. Okay, yes, but I still but notable. <laughs> You rest your case. <laughs> <laughs> like Perry Mason. Well, how about you? <laughs> the kicker. <laughs> yeah, I, I listen, like you said, he's, he's doing a great job. Um, I think the alums, the former players and lettermen are coming around to, to like this guy. You know, I mean, he's done a lot of great things. But something like that happens, and you can't help but look back at what Joe Paterno would have done, right? And we all know that he wasn't all about that, um, which has come to hurt us. Look at what happened in 94, right? That's what I'm saying. And yeah, the, here's the other thing. If you're Georgia State, make the chip shot field goal. Yeah. It's not, it wasn't as if this was a 50-yard field goal that they, that they wiped off the board. Get out there and make it, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, many are connecting this. He's just State mad because he would have been nitwit of the week that's had they made that field goal. He didn't even say that. Trying not to be influenced by that. <laughs> right. All right. Well, many are connecting this Penn State team <laughs> with being a national title contender. So when we return here on the Nitwits, we'll talk with Massimo, who was on the last Penn State team, the last two Penn State teams to hoist the title. We will be right back. The Nitwits are brought to you by Monarch Cleaners for all your dry cleaning, uniform, and mat rentals. By Reed and Selaney Orthodontics. Doctors Reed and Selaney provide orthodontics for children and adults. By W.S. Lee & Sons, your local food distributor. Go Penn State! By Allegheny Street Cigar. Allegheny Street Cigar, Blair County's only cigar lounge. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. Hi, my name is Wally Richardson, former Penn State quarterback, and you're watching the Nitwits. Welcome back. There's certainly a lot of buzz surrounding this season's team, so having won two national titles with the Nittany Lions, Massimo, you're going to the games now. Does the buzz have a similar feeling? No question about it. I mean, it's just so electric out there, just being in the stands and and seeing the talent that this team has. Um, A lot of tough games ahead, but... Man, it's uh, certainly the right year to, to, you know, it's been too long. You know, we're ready for another national championship here. Massimo, uh, you're still uh, 
right in the record book for uh, a lot of the kicking. Uh, and, and uh, you know, there were several games where you kicked four and five field goals in the game. We talked about Davis is only think had four four attempts this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and um, this was part of the style that, that Joe played, but there were a lot of field goal attempts. Uh, talk about getting yeah. into rhythm and back there in that era because uh, yeah. it was built on defense and, and special teams. Right, and, and as you know, Joe was so conservative. You know, fourth and two, kick the field goal. There's no such thing as going for it on fourth and two. Maybe on fourth and one he would go for it. So, you know, listen, I've had some great moments, uh, I've had some not so great moments, but that's the life of a kicker. You know, every kicker goes through a slump at one time or, or another. But, you know, I had the opportunity to play here at Penn State, and I had a great, great holder in Matt Kisner. I know you guys remember him. Mm -hmm. Uh, Greg Truitt, Mike Stillman were the snappers at the time. Truitt had a long NFL run. He did, he did, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it was, um, it was nice to feel like I was part of the team by being involved in so many games and so many attempts. Um, Joe was never uh, afraid to, to put me out there. Um, I do recall one instance where I had to beg for him to make me try a 53-yard field goal at uh, Giant Stadium because he was going to punt. We had a great punter, as you remember, John Bruno, that always pinned the, the other team deep. But um, we were at the Meadowlands, and we had a nice breeze going. So I asked Fran Ganner, I said, Coach, why, why can't we try a field goal here? So Joe thought about it, you know, and he said, all right, let's try it. And that was my longest kick. Your, your legacy as being part of the, the Penn State fabric and, the, you know, how, what's that meant to you over the years? You know, the more you're away from it, the more you appreciate it. That's the best way I can describe it. You don't realize what you have here playing for, for this incredible school and program until you're done. And Joe used to say it all the time, but you know, you're a young 19, 20 year old kid, you don't, you don't understand it. You really don't understand it until you grow up and have a family of your own, what it meant to be part of this, uh, this incredible program, this incredible university. And now you're in pharmaceutical sales and you live in the Philadelphia area and you mm -hmm. make it back here, your kids are at Penn State. Yes, uh, Jake and Ellie are uh, sophomores here at, at, at Penn State, so my wife and I are, Suzanne, uh, we met here at, uh, at Penn State my senior year, so we're here just about every game. It's, now, it's awesome to come back. When they look at those old 86 highlights with you with the, 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 <laughs> the face mask, how, how much of a kick do they get out of seeing the, the old highlights? Yeah, they love it. You know, and I, I'm fortunate that uh, we do have a lot of tapes, VHS tapes. I have to convert them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, they love it. You know, they, they, they're pretty proud of their dad that their dad played here. So and the other, cool. the other thing, the, the, in that 86 national title game, we were seeing the clips. How much pride do you take in the fact that special teams, your performance, John Bruno, was obviously yeah. unbelievable? I mean, special teams, without great special teams, you guys are not even in that game. I totally agree. John should have been the MVP of that game. And, you know, obviously DJ had a great game as well. But right. uh, um, John was instrumental. And, uh, you know, as you know, he. It's been a while since he passed, we and you know him, yeah. we certainly uh, remember him fondly. Every time we have a reunion, last week we had a reunion for the '82 team, and when we have reunions for the '86 team, his name always comes up. And how about that era of Italian kickers? <laughs> Manka, Gansitano, Franco, Giacomaro, uh, Giacomaro. <laughs> Go back to Vidiello. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, you know, we were all. Uh, uh, kickers were all former soccer players, you know, so uh, that was smooth transition for a lot of us to, to be able to kick soccer styles. And obviously we had the, the Bar brothers to, to live up to when we, when we got here, so. That's at the Bar High, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. good one. Too easy. <laughs> Great history of kickers. Uh, yeah, actually, I mean, Massimo, you grew up in Italy, right? I did, I did. I grew up in Italy, I moved to Nevada uh, when I was a sophomore in high school, and um, my younger brother and I decided, you know, let's, let's play football. Let's kick a football. And, and my coach um, at the time, Gene Scatini, talked us into trying out for the team. And next thing you know, Fran Ganner and the late Nick Gasparato came out to Reno, recruited me. And then uh, Nick Gasparato went to UVA and recruited my, my brother to, to kick wow. at UVA. You so. look like you could uh, fill a hole, though. Did you play any other positions at all at <laughs> any time? Well, you know, keep in mind, this is 40 pounds <laughs> ago that I, that I played. So. No, but uh, I was a pretty good athlete. I was always disappointed that Joe never had me involved in a fake field goal, you know, where, you where Matt would roll out and look for me in the back of the end zone, but you know, <laughs> they didn't trust me to catch it. Real quick, sure. did you have a, a, a 
NFL shot? I did. You know, I, I, I tried for three different years. I was actually a replacement player in 87 when I uh, kicked a couple of games for the Bengals. Um, I had tryouts with the 49ers and the Cowboys. And then I did play in Spain one year, which was a blast in the World League of American Football with the Barcelona Dragons. Jack McNeil was the coach right. from wow. uh, BC. So that was fun. That's did you make extent. a field goal in, uh, for the Bengals? I did, yeah. Uh -huh. So that was the extent of my uh, NFL experience. Oh, <laughs> Three <you>. games. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're heading to our fourth quarter, so when we return, we're turning our attention to Iowa. It is prediction time here on the Nitwits. We'll be right back. The Nitwits are brought to you by Lakeview Sheds and Vinyl in East Freedom. You can buy off our lot or we can customize your dream shed. By Shields Awards and the Sports Shop. We have a fantastic selection of awards, apparel, and memorabilia at great prices. By EasyToUse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By FightOnState.com, as close as you can get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Sunday. Welcome back. Penn State heads to Iowa on Saturday for another primetime game. PSU's foe in their Big Ten opener has wins over Wyoming, Iowa State, North Texas. They're 3-0. and How do we see this one playing out? Before we jump into that, I wanted to say one quick thing. We didn't get to it. What a great job by the crowd for that night game for, uh, for Penn State, Georgia State. I know we want to talk about Iowa, but, you know, a night game against an overmatched opponent, uh, I just I yeah. didn't think it was going to be a great crowd, and it was. Yeah, in the mirror today, they were the unsung heroes with the crowd. I mean, it looked really full. Hey, it was a lot of enthusiasm for the yeah, program cool. right now. You play at Georgia State, which really has noon written all over it, and the, and right. the Big Ten Network makes it at 7.30, but it, it really uh, it worked out. And the crowd was pretty well, go it, well. The traffic wasn't as bad. 7.30 actually was uh, appreciated as well <laughs> rather than 8. <laughs> Well, after hijacking, sorry, but I'll, I'll, I'll go first <laughs> since uh, I was nearly knit with the week. Listen, now things get <laughs> serious. You know, you yeah. go you go on the road in the Big Ten. Iowa, well-coached team, great tradition. You know, you got to get it done in this game. This is go these games, these next couple games, uh, Iowa, Indiana, and, and at Northwestern are going to let us know if this team's a legit title contender. I think Penn State comes out, plays well, and is going to win this one, 35 to 20. Hmm. Okay, I'll go next. Um, <clears throat> you know, I look at uh, how they did against Pitt, and they really didn't totally dominate Pitt, and Pitt hurt itself at times. I think you're going to see more, a closer opponent to what Pitt was than what we've seen the first and third weeks here. I'm going to say uh, Penn State 31, uh, Iowa 20. I'm going to go with uh, four field goals by uh, Tyler Davis. There you uh, go. Yeah, it's going to be 40 to 17. Wow. I like Going it. high for the oh, chair. Yeah, definitely. Okay. <laughs> All right. And I'm thinking Penn State goes in there, comes out with a 35 to 18 win in favor of the Nittany Lions. So, yep. gentlemen, thank you for joining us this Massimo, week. great coming in. Thank, thank you. you. Yep. Thanks for having me, guys. And thank you for watching. There's the updated look as Mike Irwin chair. gets the chair on the board mm -hmm. there, but everyone's still chasing after Mark Neil Brennan. <laughs> <laughs> to be determined. All right, well, thank you for watching. We hope you see you back here next week. Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, an independent firm and a firm foundation for your financial future. By Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Courtesy Motor Sales of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By Health South, your rehab choice. Health South Altoona, ask for us by name. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, uniform, and mat rentals. By Reed and Selaney Orthodontics. Doctors Reed and Selaney provide orthodontics for children and adults. By W.S. Lee and Sons, your local food distributor. Go Penn State! By Allegheny Street Cigar. Allegheny Street Cigar, Blair County's only cigar lounge. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. 
by Lakeview Sheds and Vinyl in East Freedom. You can buy off our lot or we can customize your dream shed. By Shields Awards and the Sports Shop. We have a fantastic selection of awards, apparel, and memorabilia at great prices. By EasyToUse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By FightOnState.com, as close as you can get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State Game Day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Sunday. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.